Right when you started getting to grips with the new version of Cinema, a new one comes out. Yep, there's a new version out already. Let's see what's in store. Think of this release as an early access version to Cinema's Shiny New Toys. This is a subscription only release, but later on this year, users of the Perpetual version will be able to use these features along with other additional enhancements. S22 is a release that improves the day-to-day -day work inside Cinema. Tools are restructured, some are completely rewritten, new options improve overall workflow, and of course, new tools are added into the mix. So, let's check out the first feature. The first thing you will notice when switching to the UV editing layout is how similar it is to the default Cinema layout. And that's a good thing. The UV layout of previous releases shuffled icons and managers around and it was the source of a lot of confusion and frustration for new and even regular C4D users. The object and attribute managers are now in the place you expect them to be. Objects and commands are in the same place as in the default layout and most importantly there are no separate tools for selecting polygons, points or edges in the UV editor in the viewport. The regular selection tools will work on both. So no more hunting around to find the right tools. The other thing you will notice is this handy area here in the middle. We can basically do all of our UV unwrapping right here without having to dig into menus and commands. Let's give it a try. We need to first give our head model a basic projection. Let's go with flat. To avoid having to rotate our UVs once they're unwrapped, we'll pin some points down. Now let's define the area used for unwrapping. With the path selection tool, we draw where we want the unfolding to happen. And now all we need to do is hit the UV unwrap command. And just like that, our head model is unwrapped. The cool thing is that we have an interactive way of uh, refining our UVs. So we can further add to our previous selection and the UV editor will update accordingly. Another helpful addition in S22 is the fact that we can now preview the unwrapping seam right in the viewport. This is very helpful when refining our UVs and of course it's great since we can easily merge seams by selecting them in the viewport. The previewing options don't end here though. If we go into the UV settings, we can enable the connectivity preview, which gives us valuable information on what part connects to what. We can clearly see for example that this part of the torso connects to this leg, and this part to this leg. We now also have the ability to preview the UV distortion by going into the UV settings or the view menu and picking the distortion option. This is a great way to see how stretched our texture will be. Blue indicates little stretching, while deep red means the exact opposite. With that in mind, we can see that there's not a lot of stretching here, but we need to do some more work here. Another very handy preview is the option to display UV islands in multiple colors. Each UV island gets a unique color, which is perfect for identifying islands between 3D view and texture view. To evaluate the quality of our unwrapping, we can enable the UV map option here. This preview gives us a nice indication of how distorted the final texture will be. We now also have two new packing methods that help us fit UV islands into the available texture space. Rasterized packing provides a fast result, while geometric is a little bit slower but uses the UV space in a more effective manner. There's also a new totally automatic UV unwrapping option, which works great for baking or getting a quick start with 3D painting, anytime this specific location of our seams isn't especially important. With all these additions, UV unwrapping is now a much more enjoyable and easier process. But it looks like this is not the only update we will get for UVs. Hey everyone, we're thrilled to get these UV enhancements into your hands as part of Cinema 4D S22. We're changing the way we develop and deliver Cinema 4D in order to get valuable workflow enhancements into your hands quicker than ever before, and to build upon those features based on your feedback. In fact, we're continuing work on UVs, viewport, and some really great and exciting new features for another release later this year. So stay tuned for more UV goodness soon. Now let's move on to the next feature. With the move to the new modeling core, Cinema's modeling tools have been rewritten and in the process their functionality and UI has been refined. I'm not going to cover all the changes, but here are some of my favorite ones. 
The iron tool now has an option to respect vertices and a border. So now instead of this, we can get this. Non-manifold edges are now a thing of the past. By clicking on the resolve non-manifold command, pesky polygons get disconnected. And then swiftly taken care of. Close polygon hole now gives us more options. Before, we could only close a hole like this. But now we can choose between n-gons, triangles, and quads. The bridge tool also got an update. We now have the option to add subdivisions and also spin the polygons around. And triangulate now does a great job of getting rid of these annoying triangles. So now you can go from an object looking like this to this. And it's all interactive. With the edge cut tool, we now have much more control of our edge flow. By enabling the corners option, the cuts now end in n-gons, resulting in a much cleaner geometry. There are still several more improvements like improved loop and ring selection, but let's move on to the next feature. One of the most important changes in the viewport for the Mac users is the fact that it now runs on metal, taking full advantage of the hardware available and ensuring compatibility with future macOS updates. But apart from that, there are several workflow and performance-based improvements in the viewport. For example, there are some big performance improvements when it comes to multi-instances and navigation. Let's take this scene as an example. In the previous release, we had to go to points mode to be able to navigate our scene easily. But in S22, the navigation is buttery smooth and without any hiccups. The filter section in the viewport also received some helpful workflow improvements. Apart from the cleaner listing and grouping of the different filters, we now have this handy geometry only button. So instead of going through all the filters and disabling deformer previews, camera angles and HUD data, we can just hit the geometry only button and we instantly have a clean viewport where we can evaluate our work. We now also have the ability to save filter setups to reuse in all of our projects. For example, I can disable these uh, settings, hit save preset, and then I can recall them easily through the load preset option here. And of course, we can load these presets in the viewport renderer through the exact same preset dialog. Finally, another really important option, if we're working on a laptop or a really heavy scene, is this option here. It basically downscales the resolution of the viewport to increase performance. This also improves readability since the preview elements become thicker. Another way to increase readability can be found in the viewport display preferences. This is especially useful when modeling since we can adjust the edge size and spline size and along with the selected point size and edge size, we can now have meshes that are much easier to read. So that's the viewport. Now on to the next one. Sharing models on the internet is now much easier to do. With S22, we can export GLTF models straight out of cinema. We have the option to choose between two different formats and the ability to export PSR animation, joint-based animation, materials, and cameras. It's basically a one-click solution that allows us to output our assets in a format that is interactive and more fun to play with for the end user. Of course, a new version of Cinema wouldn't be complete without new assets for the Condor browser. As with previous releases, we have quite a big selection of high-quality assets. All objects have really clean geometry and beautiful textures. The assets can be used straight out of the browser, but if for some reason we need to make changes, they are built in a way that allows for easy adjustments of materials or geometry. One of my favorite assets added to S22 are the grass elements. We can quickly grab different types of uh, grass assets, throw them in a cloner, adjust them with a couple of effectors, and in no time at all we can have some beautiful results that add that extra bit of detail to our scenes. There are also some uh, great HDRs added that can give us drastically different looking results. They have more than 50 stops of uh, exposure and they come in high resolutions, so you will be able to get very good lighting and reflections that are nice and crisp. 
All these images are created only with assets from the Condor browser, and as you can see we can achieve some beautiful results with them. I've only covered a few of the assets uh, available for this release. There are many more, and of course don't forget that the libraries uh, are almost 10 gigabytes in size in total, so no matter the project you're working on, you're bound to find something you want. There are also other S22 features I haven't uh, covered here. For example, the great GoZ plugin, responsible for the connection between ZBrush and Cinema. It's now updated, and it's perfect if you're working frequently with ZBrush. There are also improvements uh, when it comes to MyMax and corporate accounts, that allow multiple licenses and entitlements among team members. This and other features will be covered with additional videos on Maxon's website and YouTube channel. And with that, we've reached the end of this uh, video. The update is available now, so start downloading and most importantly, have fun.